Today's sermon is entitled Amazing Grace. We will delve into the depths of this divine grace, a grace so profound that it has the power to transform lives, heal wounds, and offer salvation to all who embrace it. So our speaker through Zoom today, Pastor Vernon Apuzin, is a missionary church planner of Green Hills Christian Fellowship East. He was sent to Ormoc City in 2015, where by the grace of God, three churches were planted in the city and two churches were planted in Samar. With his family, he moved to Davao City in 2022, where he feels he is called to plant new churches for the glory of God. Brothers and sisters, let us give a warm welcome to our brother, Pastor Vernon Apuzin. Good morning, everyone. Hi, good morning. Um, today, we will talk about God's amazing grace. And uh, I know that every time we hear of this phrase, amazing grace, there's this tune or song that we hear, right? It's, and you can, you can, sing along with me or you can hum this tune while I read the first stanza of Amazing Grace. Amazing Grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found, was blind, but now I see. That much loved classic hymn wonderfully summarizes our salvation, that it is purely by the grace of God. When we think of grace and we think of salvation, there is this Bible passage that comes to our mind. And most of the time, it would be Ephesians 2, 8 to 9. And this is the go-to passage whenever we think and we remember the salvation that we have received from God and the grace that he, um, that he poured out on us. And I know that many of you, if not all, have memorized this passage, right? So could we all together recite this scripture? It does, it does not matter what Bible version or language you want to use. Just say this aloud from memory. And for those who have not memorized this yet, you can follow along in the screen uh, that we uh, will project for you. Ephesians 2, 8 to 9. For it is by grace you have been saved through faith. This is not from yourselves. It is the gift of God, not by works, so that no one can boast. Many of us do not have a problem doctrinally with this verse, I hope. We truly believe that this verse plainly says salvation is 100% God's work. We do not bring anything to the table in order for us to be saved. God, instead of punishing us for the sins we have committed against him, he sent his son, Jesus, to pay for the punishment that we deserve. Instead of us dying as the just punishment for our sins, Christ died for us. And the moment we put our faith in Christ, God cancels our debt and declares us just or justified. And from being enemies of God, we now become children of God. Now, isn't that amazing? That's the amazing grace 
of God. However, if this is all that we can see about or that we know about the grace of God, we shortchange ourselves and God does not get all the glory that he deserves. If this is all, we think of God's grace. What do I mean by this? I Many Christians, after believing that salvation is not by works, but by God's grace, they have relegated this grace of God and their act in the past. They have now started, like, they, they think, okay, I believe in Jesus. I have placed my faith in Jesus. All of this in the past. And I have received the grace of God and the salvation that comes from God. And then what they do now is that now, uh, they start relying on their own efforts, on their own good works for them to grow and mature in their faith. Now, Paul has a word for that. He calls it foolishness. In Galatians chapter 3, verse 3, he says, How foolish can you be after starting your new lives in the Spirit? Why are you now trying to become perfect by your own human effort? Paul was the one who preached the gospel to the Galatians during his first missionary journey. Apparently, during his, uh, this journey, many believed in the gospel and the Holy Spirit's power was mightily displayed among the people. So many believed in the gospel that Paul preached and many got saved. But after experiencing this salvation, and after Paul and Barnabas left, there came Jews who taught them that this is not, faith in God is not enough. That grace alone is not enough. They needed to be, become like Jews. They needed to be circumcised in order for them to advance in their Christian life, in order for them to mature and to become more uh, as a, as more like Christ or more as a Christian, they should become like Jews and perform acts that will help them become more mature in their Christian life. And Paul tells them, this is foolishness. And why is this foolishness? It is foolish to think that becoming a Christian and living the Christian life operates under different principles. That one is fully by grace, by the grace of God, while the other is accomplished by our own human effort. You see, sanctification is still completely dependent on God's grace. Our whole Christian life is defined by faith and never on our own performance. But what about the re Bible's rigorous call to action, such as um, Matthew 16, 24 to 25, where it says, If anyone would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever would save his life would lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. See, 
in this verse, you can see that there are calls to action. That as a Christian, there are things that you ought to do, such as you come after Christ. You deny yourself. You take up your cross or take up the cross of Christ. And you are to follow Jesus. Now, all those are calls to action. And in Hebrews 4.11, it says, Let us therefore strive to enter that rest so that no one may fall by the same sort of disobedience. Again, there is this call to action for Christians to strive. There is, there is this idea that we have to work. So what, what is how do we reconcile these things? And again, in Philippians 2, 12 to 13, it says here, work out your salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God who works in you, both to will and to work for his good pleasure. Again, there is this call to action for Christians to work out. Now, isn't this, how do we, how do we reconcile this? The call to action and then the idea that indeed we are simply uh, saved by the grace of God and that the salvation is 100% 100% the work of God again in Hebrews 12 14 another verse and there are many many other verses like this but let me just give you this four verses it says he should strive for peace with everyone as Christians we are to strive we are to work for peace. And what not just peace, but we are to strive for holiness. Now, isn't this uh, uh how what do you call that? Um, uh, isn't this um don't they clash? Right? Uh How, does, how do we reconcile this thing? That salvation is the gracious gift of God through faith. How do we reconcile that salvation is the gracious gift work of God, and yet we are called to work out our salvation? Now, this is not contradictory at all. But this is how God designed our salvation. This is the wisdom of God in designing our salvation. You see, salvation is the gracious gift of God through faith. And works are the evidence of that faith and that you are indeed saved. Salvation is a gift. From God. And if you have truly believed in God, it will come out, good works will simply come out of you. And this is the evidence that indeed you are truly saved and that you indeed have faith in God. Now, we have to remember our good works are not decisive in our salvation, they are simply evidence. Of God's saving work in us. Now, what is what are the benefits of knowing these things? First, God's amazing grace allows us to rest, to rest in Christ. Remember, Jesus said, Come to me, all of you who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Now, what kind of rest is this? It is the rest from um, the performance treadmill that many Christians do. And why do we do that? Because as human beings, 
we are legalistic in nature. We have, in our culture, we have this traditional mindset that uh, we do something, we expect something in return. And that there is no such thing as free lunch, they say. So there's always a catch. But that is not uh, what the Lord does to us through grace. Sometimes, in our because of our legalistic and transactional mindset, we think that our performance earns the blessings of God. Our performance, we think, will give us, we, we will have the right to receive God's blessings for as long as we do His will. I, I, that is definitely what, not, what the Bible is not teaching us. Because if we look at Ephesians 2.10, which is the verse after uh, Ephesians 2, 8 and 9, we see how God um, has prepared good works for us. Meaning, if we have truly placed our faith in God, and if we have truly received the grace that God has given us, then this is the evidence. Because this is the truth. We are God's handiwork. God is the one at work in our lives. And he has created us in Christ Jesus to do good works, which he has prepared in advance for us to do. Now, in 2 Corinthians 1 verse 20, it also says, for no matter how many promises God has made, they are yes in Christ. They are yes in Christ. What does that mean? It means that all the promises of Jesus Christ, of God, is already paid for by the blood of Jesus, by the death of Jesus. That that what we will receive, the blessings that we ought to receive, that God has prepared for us, is already yes in Christ Jesus. There is this um, illustration that I always hear um, from some preachers, which I do not agree in. And this is the illustration. Um, there was this man who a Christian who finally died. And then he got to heaven. And then in heaven, he was shown a room, a big room, all the things that he was asking for, uh, no, that he wanted while he was alive. And then uh, when he got there, he saw, Lord, why are these things here? I wanted them. But the, the angel or the Lord said to him, you know what? We wanted to give this to you, but you did not pray enough for this. You did not um, have faith enough to ask for this. You did not pull heaven or pull some string so that you can receive this. That's why they remained here. But that is not what the Bible says. The Bible tells us that everything, all the promises of God is already yes in Jesus Christ. Just yesterday, um, this is an illustration that happened, uh, that, that happened to us yesterday. My wife and I uh, were driving and we were discussing our finances. And the reason we were discussing our finances is because a visitor will be coming over, a friend of ours from Manila, 
will be coming over and will visit us lunchtime. And we were talking about how we were talking about how um, our finances is, are not enough for the week. And we were and we were saying that um, how can we we wanted, you know, we have friends coming over and we wanted to be um, to welcome them. To be hospitable, as the Bible wants us to be, to to our fellow Christians. So they were coming over, and we were saying, "How can we, um, how can we feed them, or how can we welcome them? We do not have enough." And while we were doing that, uh, we were, I was just, you know sighing in, inside me. But I did not pray. I I, I, I felt that, wow, this is, uh, this is a situation I don't like to be in. I want to be a blessing to, to my friends as, as they come. I want to invite them for lunch, but it seems like we do not have enough finances for that. And I didn't, but I forgot to pray for it. So what that, uh, well, probably because of, you know, I was driving and I was feeling really, really heavy in my heart at that time. So what happened was we went to, somebody invited also uh, us for dinner. And after dinner, somebody gave us or gave us some cash. And it was more than enough for us to uh, buy lunch for our friends and have fellowship with them. And we were so happy. And then, then I remember, and we were just, as we were driving back home, my, my wife and I, we were just praising God. And I said, and I, suddenly I said, look at that. I, I forgot to pray for this. In fact, I didn't pray for this. And yet God still blessed us. Why? Because God is in the uh, Second Corinthians first uh, one twenty says that God's promises, His promise that He will provide everything that you need, they are already yes in the Lord Jesus Christ. Meaning, if you are truly in Christ, and how do we become uh, in union with Christ? when we put our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. So these things are simply evidence of that truly we are already saved and that God um, has already blessed us and has given us his grace. And his grace is not just relegated in the past. His grace is the one also allowing us to grow in our faith in him and become more Christ-like. Another thing that, uh, another reason why uh, the idea that you have to work, that you have to contribute, and that it is not, that faith in the grace of God is not enough, but you have to work and do something uh, in order for you to become, to receive the blessings of God and to become more Christ-like, uh, the reason that this is um, false is that this um, this is a slap on the finished work of the Lord Jesus Christ. Not just his death, but Christ was, uh, when he was here on earth, he lived a perfect and sinless life. And having lived that perfect and sinless life, that life is what God looks at. That righteousness that Christ has is the one that is imputed to us as righteousness. And we cannot add anything to the good and the full obedience of Christ 
We could not add anything so that we can have more of the blessings and the um, the goodness of God in our lives. What I'm, I am saying here is that salvation is all God's work from start to finish. Salvation is all God's work. God's grace saved us from the penalty of sin and is working in us to free us from the power of sin and will one day ultimately take us away from the presence of sin. Now, um, how do we apply this practically? Now, I know some of you are parents with children who are who might be displaying um, disobedience to God, who might not be as Christian as you want them to be, or probably you have children who are like who were like me before, who was who kind of didn't give anything uh, any um, yeah um, who did not give any um, desire who did not show any desire for the spiritual things. All I wanted was what the world could give me. And I was I'm a man of the world. And this is something that can uh, encourage you. Because what my mother did was simply, well, of course, every time we meet, she would try to share to me the gospel, which of which being a disobedient and uh, just a terrible uh, son, I would shove her and will not listen to her when it comes to um, anything about spiritual life. Anything about the Bible, I will not listen. And, and what she did was she simply prayed for me. She continued to pray for me. And the, the, the grace of God is this. God did not say, oh, I, okay, I will wait until he does something good or he cleans up his act and then I will save him. No, I remember I was in a bar at that time when suddenly I just felt the, the word of God and the presence of God and I felt that what am I doing here in this place? And I felt like I am still alive, and yet my, my soul, my body is already burning in hell. I was in that place. And then when, when I felt that, I felt so afraid. And I went to the Lord in prayer, and I said, Lord, if, there's any, if there is something else for me, would you take me away from this place? And then I, 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 the Lord just poured out his grace upon grace upon grace. And I realized that I started walking in his ways. And I started to finally realize that it is him who calls me into his presence. And he is working it out. Even until now, there is nothing. I could not claim any perfection in me. That I, I, I know that there are still, I could still commit sin, and yet I know He still forgives me, even today. So, the what what am I saying is this: there is hope if you feel that you have children who are disobedient and who do not care for God. There is hope. Why? Because salvation is not the work of man. But salvation is the work of God. God's grace saved us from the penalty of sin. That's the past. God is working in us to free us from the power of sin. And that is what we are experiencing now. And we have this hope one day that ultimately God will take us away from the presence of sin.
Um, I'm sorry, um, suddenly my, my uh, camera did not work, but I praise God that my daughter is here and she has a spare one. <laughs> uh, so uh, we were able to continue. But again, this is all, again, a display of the grace of God for you and for me. Shall we come to the Lord in prayer? Father, we praise you and thank you that salvation is all your work. That you have saved us. You did not wait for, for us to clean up our act. You did not wait for us to do anything good. Instead of, oh Lord, you sent your son, the Lord Jesus Christ, to die for our sins, to pay for the penalty of our sins. And because of that, O oh Lord, we are now, instead of becoming being your enemies, we are now your children. Again, this is your grace. And we are, right even right now, experiencing, O oh Lord, how you are working in us to free us from the penalty of sin in our lives, from the power of sin in our lives. You are freeing us from the clutches of sin, and we're seeing how that you are the one at work in us, willing us to, to do your will. And that our, our greatest hope is that one day we will be with you and sin will be no more. There will be no more pain, no more tears, only in your presence and by your grace, O oh Lord, that we will be with you. So I thank you. Thank you for this. Um, encouragement and may each one be encouraged oh Lord especially those who are praying for somebody they, they love that these people their loved ones will come to you and also put their faith in you again oh Lord this is not something that we can do but only you can save us and continually work in us so we will be free from the power of sin. Thank you. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Thank you, Pastor Vernon, for the message. Um, personally, what I got from the message is how you explain that God's grace allows us uh, or frees us from the transactional mindset that um, our performance and our good works will equal blessings from God. But God's grace frees us from that. So we don't have to be bound by those types of ideas. And that he does always take care of us as he promises to. So thank you for sharing this message. So now the floor is open um, to people online and also in person to share what they learned from the message or any blessings they had this past week. So if you'd like to share, just uh, wave at me or um, just unmute yourself on Zoom. Oh, yeah. Hello, po. Uh, greetings from the Philippines. <laughs> uh, praise the Lord for the message, uh, Vernon. Uh, maybe a lot of you don't know Vernon and I are, are childhood friends. So I can't believe he's, you know, up to now I still can't believe he's preaching. <laughs> Uh, but, you know, God is a God of miracles, and I praise the Lord that because of his grace, Vernon is here to, you know, to exhort about his grace, about the Lord's amazing grace. Thank you, Vernon, and also Mabelie, thank you uh, for your ministry. Let's continue to pray for their ministry in Davao. Uh, also, I'd like to praise the Lord because I'm here. Thank you for your prayers, for the traveling mercies. Actually, uh, 
two days ago when the plane was landing in Toronto, there was a uh, super turbulence that everybody was screaming in the plane. And I'm like, okay, this is how I'm gonna die, <laughs> you know? <laughs> okay, I already talked to my, uh, you know, the person beside me, we're gonna die, we're gonna die. <laughs> so we're all screaming, right? And then uh, thankfully the Lord, um, you know, led the plane uh, to land safely. And it was so traumatic for all of us in the plane that we all stood up and clapped <laughs> when we landed. <laughs> So yeah, so it was uh, an experience. Also, thank you for, um, I thank the Lord for a wonderful uh, vacation in the Philippines and it was really fruitful. During my vacation, I was informed by Anderson College that I was laid off uh, from work. So I, it was not a surprise. There was already a rumor going on in the college that there was gonna be, there was gonna be a massive layoff. And so before I left for vacation, I already started applying for a job. And praise the Lord, I'm starting my new job tomorrow. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Uh, so tomorrow, please pray for me as I begin my, uh, my new job as Assistant Director of Admissions at Visual, I pa memorize the name of college, Visual College of Arts and Design here in Mississauga. Yeah. So yeah, thank you, thank you, and uh, the Lord is so good. Thank you for sharing, Sister Joy. I'm glad the plane was okay, and it's also great that um, God bless you with a new job really nicely and fast. Um, does anyone else want to share? Yep. Because uh, I saw Pastor Vernon, uh, you know, grew up. <laughs> yeah. And uh, actually, there are seven in the family. You know, that, that their names all, you know, start with V. Mm -hmm. Vernon, Valmike, Vername, uh, Valerie. Valerie, and Vincent, and Victor. Okay. So while he was growing up, he... You know, he was the missing apuzin in the family. Yeah. And uh, when, when I say he's the missing apu apuzin in the family, uh, his, his dad was, you know, was a, a great, uh, you know, preacher of the, the Christian Missionary Alliance in the Philippines. And uh, uh, seven, and he was the missing one. <laughs> and, uh, you know, Every Sunday school, he wasn't there. Yeah. The, the, the sisters and, and brothers were there, but he was missing. Yeah. Until I, uh, probably in his teen years, right? In his teen years. So I, I totally agree with what uh, Pastor Vernon, you know, said a while ago that uh, salvation is really the work of God 100%. 100%. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it's 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 really a miracle, you know. When I heard about him, you know, uh, you know, uh, going to the seminary, what? Vernon? I don't even call him Pastor Vernon, you know. Yeah, it's it's really a miracle, you know, that uh, for how many years, you know, and then uh, finally he's, he was found. <laughs> yeah, and uh, yeah, Pastor, Pastor Vernon. <laughs> Hanggang ngayon, di pa ako makapaniwala, no? Uh, kasi dun sa church namin, parang ano eh, no? There were, there were lots of, you know, kids there before that, you know, would, uh, when they're in the university, wala na, no? And then, slowly, slowly, you know, they, they, they come back, you know? Ay, ay naku, ang daming istorya. Hindi ako mawawala na baka magdamag, eh, ano? Uh, yeah. And uh, there, there was one time even, you know, isang kwan, a son of, uh, you know, of, of one of our elders, one of our elders, uh, and then we went to Bible study. I saw him by, you know, by the street, like, Hita! Sang, Nako, eto na, no? After, maybe I have not seen that guy for like, you know, uh, maybe six or ten years. And then I went, I went back to the, the old church. Oh, it's a deacon. 
you know, he became a deacon. You know, so tama yung sinabi ni Pastor, you know, uh, Pastor uh, Vernon na uh, let's not, you know, give up hope, especially sa mga anak natin. No? Kasi hindi natin trabaho yun. It's not even the, the job of a preacher to save, no? It's the job, it's 100%. Na it is the job of God. Na iyak tule ako. Tigil na ako. Thank you for sharing, Nanai Lalit. Um, yeah, it was really great to hear your story, Pastor Vernon. Um, yeah, to hear from someone who worried his parents, like because they weren't sure if he was always serious about God. But what you said, like that God provides for your family. Because that's his promise, so you don't have to worry so much about your children. Um, does anyone else want to share? Okay, that's all right. We can always share next week. So thank you for those who have shared their blessings this week and what they learned from the message. Now we're going to move on to announcements. So first of all, I'd like to thank um, all the people who volunteered their time and efforts for August. Um, thank you so much. Next September, our theme for the month will be communion. And we will have these four preachers discuss various aspects about communion to us. So make sure to look out for that. Our first September volunteers, uh, here we are over there. Um, just a heads up for the coffee and breakfast. It's the Irong, Lardy Zabel, and Cruz families. And let's see. Yep, and the rest is up there. And Sunday school teachers are Sister Raquel, Brother Ian, and Sis Rhoda. And finally, we have a save the date for our FCC fall retreat. So make sure to write this down. It will be on October 13, 14, and 15. And October 13 and 14 are also overnight. It's going to be at Ontario Christian Assembly Camp in Shelburne, Ontario which is just an hour drive from here. So it's not that far. Um, again, it's October 13, 14, and 15, which are a Friday to Sunday. So we hope to see you guys there. There will be more information on registration um, to follow. So just save the date for now, and we hope you'll come. And yep, those are all the announcements this week. So I just... Oh, okay. And I just want to call uh, Brother Roland for our closing prayer. Oh, oops. Uh, sis Sister Ida. Uh, sorry. <laughs> okay. okay, let's all let's all stand. Well, but before that, uh, let's try and greet our brother here. It's his birthday tomorrow. My, bro <laughs> my brother June, okay? <laughs> Happy birthday, brother June. So if you just uh, try and greet him later on, accept, he, they accept invitations, brother June. All right. We're all free for lunch today. Okay. So just thank you guys for today. And let's thank the Lord for what he has given us today, his message. And then uh, we're, we're, for the week, I, we, let's just pray for, more, uh, for his guidance. Oh, Lord, we just thank you, God, for this wonderful day. Thank you, Lord, for the songs we sang this morning. Lord, indeed, you uh, have done a, a lot of things for you. You blessed us, oh, God. We just continue to give honor and praise to you. Even, Lord, thank you, God, for... Your message for us today, even for the kids, oh God, I am just thankful for them. Thank you, Lord, for the lessons that you gave them for Sunday school. Even I myself, oh God, sometimes I think, oh God, like children, that's what you want us to be. Lord, we 
I know we teach, but sometimes, oh God, we forget all of the lessons that we teach. But, oh God, you always remind us, oh God, from day one, oh God, that you are loving, you're caring, and you're a very welcoming God. Thank you, Lord, for the commitment that the teachers are doing. And thank you, Lord, for the wisdom that you are giving them. Allow us, Lord, to continue to grow the grace and knowledge of you, God, because this is what your purpose for us is. Purpose for us is to know you more, Lord, and at the end of the and the end of the race, Lord, I know you'll tell us, well done, good and faithful servants. Lord, that's what we want to hear from you. Lord, I know part, I ask for forgiveness. We ask for forgiveness most of the time. So, God, we, we fail. But, Lord, thank you, Lord, because just like the prodigal son, you're all, your arms are always open. Even when we fall, you pick us up. Thank you, Lord, because we know that you're a good shepherd. Lord, we were lost once. Lord, I pray that you just continue to uh, just pick us up anytime, Lord, we fall short. Allow us, Lord, to realize, oh God, that sometimes we are in a mess. For whatever mess we, ha we have or we are in, thank you, Lord, because you know inside us, you look at our hearts, Lord, you look at our hearts, not our outside appearance. I pray, Lord, that uh, you'd forgive us and welcome us back and continue to use us, Lord, because it is the fruit of the Holy Spirit that you want us to share. Allow us, Lord, to evangelize using that, those, those gifts that you gave us. Allow us, Lord, to continue to show love. In the world, there's no love. There's no care. But Lord, you place us in earth, on earth. And our mission is to continue to show your love, the love of Jesus that we have. And know that the hope is always in Jesus. Like to read in uh, Jude. Now to him who is able to keep you from stumbling and to present you before his glorious presence without fault. And with great joy to the only God, our Savior, be glory, majesty, power, and authority through Jesus Christ, our Lord, before all ages, now and forevermore. And everybody says, Amen. Thank you very much. Thank you, Brother Roland. Uh, thank you, everyone, for coming this week. And again, thank you, Pastor Vernon. And we hope to see you all next Sunday.